So let's go through this exercise in which uh, we want to calculate all sorts of summary statistics uh, for these two data sets. So we're having samples for two variables. Uh, we're having a sample for, uh, for the price variable called P, uh, we call it P, and the market share, let's call that M. And uh, for each of them, we have 10 observations. And for each of them, we want to calculate the average, the median, the variance, standard deviation, and upper and lower quartile. Um, where the, these are samples. So this is sample information that will be important for some of these measures. So if you want to calculate this by hand, and of course you uh, should know how to do that, um, what we're going to do is we're going to use a table like this, where you have your data. If you have two variables, you have these two variables. Perhaps you only have one variable sometimes. Then what we have is a column where we calculate the observation minus the mean, both for P and for M. And then, so that's the deviation from the mean. And then we need the squared deviation again for both variables if you have two variables. So that's how your table should look like. So what, what we need, first of all, is we need the mean. So how do we get the mean? So for instance, P bar will be one over 10, because we have 10 observations, times the sum of all the P's. Okay, so if you sum all of these up, uh, what you get is 1070. If you sum all of the M's up, uh, what you actually get is one, which is perhaps not surprising because that's a market share. So P bar is gonna be uh, 1070 divided by 10, which is 107 and M bar is going to be 0.1 because it's one divided by 10 observations. So with these two values, we can we know that this mean here, that is going to be 107, and this mean here is going to be 0 0.1. So we can calculate these columns here. We calculate uh, 106 minus 107, that is minus 1. Let's do a few observations here. 106.7 minus 107 is minus 0.3. And 107.5 minus 107 is plus 0.5 and so forth. I'll give you the solutions in a moment. For M, so we have 0.17 uh, minus 0.1, that is 0.07. Then we have 0.12 minus uh, 0.1, that is 0.02. And 0.05 minus 0.1, that is minus 0.05. So you can see some deviations are positive, some negative. And that, that will always be the case, unless all values are exactly the same. Then we need the squared values. Well, I'll show you the complete table for this here in a moment. Um, the squared values here, minus 1 squared is, of course, 1. 0.3 minus 0.3 squared is... 0.09 and 0.5 squared is 0.25 and then 0.07 squared is 0.0049 okay and that's right and uh, then what we need is 0.02 squared is 0.004 and finally uh, we are having a minus 0 0.05 uh, squared and that is uh, here 0 0.0025 0 0.025 okay so let me and what we then need is actually, especially of these two columns, we need uh, the sums. So what we see here is the complete table with all the values uh, completed. Uh, let's repeat again what we calculated. P bar was 107 and M bar was 0.1. So now we want to calculate the variance, the variance, sample variance, let's call it S squared for P is 
1 over, and now not 10, but 9, because it's a sample variance, the sum of pi minus p bar squared. So the sum of this column. The sum here is 8.18, so we have 1 over 9 times 8.18, and that turns out to be 0 0.9089, rounded to four decimal places. You should always at least round to four decimal places. Then we have sample variance of m is 1 over 9 and now times this sum because that's the sum of mi minus uh, let's, let me just write that down the sum of mi minus m bar so that is 1 over 9 times 0 0.0542 and that is 0 0.0060 okay uh, then we want the standard deviations, sample standard deviations. They are just the square roots of these sample variances. So uh, let's write them here. S P is the square root. Uh, so that is going to be 0 0.9534. 534. Of course, you calculate that either. I don't know that just by looking at it. I calculated it with a calculator. Uh, or you can use Excel, and we'll, we'll see how to do these calculations in Excel in a moment. And the, vari uh, the standard sample standard deviation of M is 0 0.0776. So the um, final, oh yes, median. Okay, median and upper and lower quartiles were also demanded. So. To do this, what you need to do is you need to order these observations. Okay, you can see they are presented not ordered, but by observations. So we need the ordered observations. The ordered observations. Okay, and let's go through the calculations for uh, the market share, actually. And I'll give you the results for P, and you can replicate that yourself. So the market share, M. The ordered observations are 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.05, and we have three of them. So three petrol stations with a market share of 5%. Then the next one has 10%, then 12%. Then 17, then 0.2, and uh, the largest has 23% market share. Okay, so these are the ordered observations. Now, the median is the value which splits um, the sample into half, a value which has 50% lower and 50% observations higher. Than that particular value. Now, if we've ordered that, we have 10 observations, that's going to be somewhere here between the fifth and the sixth observation. So the median is going to be between 0 0.05 and 0 0.10, and we know the convention is that it's halfway between those. So the median for M is going to be 0 0.075. Five. And let me also tell you what the median for P is, but you uh, can get that yourself. The median for P is 0 0.07, uh, well, sorry, 107.15. Okay. Now, what about the lower and the upper quartile? So let's uh, calculate that here. The lower quartile. Now that is the same as the 25th percentile. Okay, so we could say percentile the 25th. That means 
it's a value where 25% of, of the observations in the sample are lower and 75% are larger. So what you need to do here is you need to first understand what, what sort of percentiles are these actual values here. So for instance, that that value here, 0 0.02, what sort of percentile is this? Well, the value of 0 0.02, one observation is smaller and eight are larger. So this is the one over nine. So we have nine observations other than that precise value and one is smaller. So this is like the 11th, roughly 11th percentile. What about this one, 0 0.05? This is two over nine. So two out of nine values are smaller than 0 0.05. So that is something like the 22nd percentile and so forth. So three over nine, this will be 0 0.33rd percentile. And you, you can see the pattern here. Let me just do that and then Six and da, 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 seven, seven. I, I should really, if I'm rounding, do it like this. Or point um, eight, 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 nine. And this is then the one hundredth percentile because this value, hundred percent of observations are smaller than this. Or point two three. Okay, I'll, other than that particular observation, that's how we calculate that. Okay, so if we want the 25th percentile, we know we are somewhere between this value and this value. Now, in this case, this is sort of particularly easy because these two values are the same. So that means the 25th percentile has to be 0 0.05, has to be that value. Okay, so that's for, uh, for M. What about P? I'll just give you the result and we see how to calculate it in um, so lower quartile. And that for P is 106. 0.175. Now we'll see in a moment how this calculated, but let's look at uh, the upper quartile. So for M, the upper quartile, or the 75th percentile, that's going to be somewhere between these two values. Because we have the 66th percentile here and the 70 eighth percentile here and it's gonna be a little bit closer to this value here 75th is closer to 77 than to 66 but it's going to be between 12 and 17 but not quite in the middle of those okay a little bit closer so how much closer is it going to be okay well it's going to be Basically, the way how we calculate it is that lower value plus something. And now how much is it? So how much of that difference between 17 and 12? So plus something, I'll continue that in the next line. So something of that difference, which is 0 0.17 minus 0 0.12. So something of five, percent or 0 0.05 will be added how much will be added well however the far away we are from 0 0.66 so our percentile we want is 0 0.75 how far is that away from that 666 percentile that's that much 
And how much is the entire distance between these two percentiles? Well, it's 0.7778 minus 0.666. I, I should really say 7 here. Okay, we have that rounded 7. Okay, so in this thing will be something smaller than 1 because that distance is going to be smaller. When you calculate that, what you get is 0.1575. Okay, and that is what in Excel we use. The function we use is called the percentile.inc function. Okay? And we'll see that in a moment. So if you want to calculate for P, the upper quartile, what you get is 107.5. Okay, so you can again test your understanding with this. So these are all the statistics we were meant to calculate. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to switch over to Excel and I'll show you how to do the calculations there. But of course, you are expected to be able to do these calculations by hand. And we will test you on that. So here is our sample, our data in Excel. So the way how we do that is you could, of course, recreate. Let's actually do that first. We'll uh, recreate that table, which we just used here, uh, which we just used for the hand calculation. So, and, uh, sorry, calculate P minus mean, M minus mean, and then P minus mean squared, and P, uh, sorry, M minus mean squared. Okay, so Firstly, of course, we need the mean. That means we're calculating uh, the sum here. So we're calculating sum of all of this. Okay, sum of B2 to B11. Uh, then I just copy that across. Then we can calculate the mean. And that is uh, that divided by 10. And that divided by 10. Okay, and we get the results, which we already knew, then we want that one minus the mean. Okay, so minus one, we had that earlier. Now, if, if you copy that down, if you just check whether you've done the right thing, well, you haven't quite done the right thing, because it has moved down the references for both cells. We want to move down that blue reference. That's correct. We want to calculate B6 minus, but we want to calculate minus 107. So it shouldn't be B18. OK, so we go back into that formula, and we want to fix that B14. That shouldn't change. So we put the dollar signs in front of the B and in front of the 14. If we now copy this down, you will see that the blue reference has moved down, but the red reference has stayed where, uh, where it should be. All right, so we have that. Um, then we can just copy. Well, if you copy that across, what will have happened? The blue reference has moved, but the red one hasn't. OK, so we want to change that to a C. And now we can copy that down. Okay, we have all the values, then we want the squared values. So that squared to the power of two, you can copy that across. So is that correct? Yeah, that's m squared. And we can highlight both, copy them down. And then we need the sum again of these two columns. We have the sum formula here. So we can just copy the sum formula across. Has it done the right thing? Yes. It has done the right thing. So then we have the, um, the sample variance. Okay, sample variance is going to be that value here divided by nine. Remember, sample variance. Okay, and uh, sorry, that was the wrong. So, what do we want? We want 
the sum of this divided by nine. Okay, that's the sample variance. And we'll copy that across. Has it done the right thing? That divided by nine, that's right. Then the sample standard deviation is just going to be the square root of that value. We can copy that across here. Okay, so that's the easy uh, the easy wins. Now, of course, you don't have to do this this table to use Excel to calculate mean sample variance, sample standard deviations. Uh, we can also use that uh, the functions uh, functions using the functions. We should get the same result to calculate the sample mean. You use the average function in Excel. And you just highlight which values you want the average from 107 that's great or we can just copy that across because it has now calculated the average of that or 0.1 so what about the variance so equals we tell excel hey we want a function variance and you can see there are different versions and what we want is the variance dot s okay and then of these values and you see of course we get exactly the same result we can copy that across and we get the same result then the standard deviation we could again just calculate the square root or we can use the standard deviation function which is stdef and then again there's a population and the sample version so we want the sample version so i highlight that then i press tab to get it active again i need to tell Excel of which data you want the standard deviation and of course we have the same results again so both ways of calculating it's the same way of course one is easier than the other all right so using the functions directly is clearly easier and um, what do we need now ah we want the median okay so um, well we use the median function it's, it doesn't matter whether it's sample or population and that of course is the value we had before then we want the uh, lower quartile and the upper quartile so what we as i said before what we use here is the percentile dot ink function oh sorry uh, percentile ink so i click i highlight it and then i press tab or you can type the whole thing highlight all the observations and then you have to say you see that it requires two inputs the array that's the data for which we want a particular percentile and then comma k that's what percentile we want we want the 0.25 percentile and that's what we uh, get and again we can copy that across and uh, let's just copy that formula and put it into the upper quartile because it's almost the same all we got to change is change that from 0 0.75 to 0 point uh, from 0 0.25 to 0 0.75 and here we have the upper quartile and again we can copy that across that's fine so that's how you use the function in excel now if you want to replicate the hand calculation of the percentile Let's quickly do that. What we first need is we need the sorted observations. So let me just copy these across here. But now we want to sort sort these. So you highlight this, go to data, sort. It asks you, it says it's a little bit unusual that you want this, you know, only this column sorted, not the entire table. So you have to click continue with the current selection rather than expanding and sort my data has headers yeah that p okay uh, then we have to separately sort this one continue with the current selection uh, it now thinks that that first column here is the header so we untick this just make sure you're sorting all 10 observations and we have these sorted observations okay and um yeah, and then from there you can go on with the hand calculations as we've uh, done them before. Okay, that's you would have seen on the hand version, handwork version, these sorted values here, they are the same 
sorted values as these. So that's this question done.